How much salary do you think you need to earn before you can afford to buy a condo as a single? And you should know by now that property prices are insane in Singapore. For a couple with dual income, it's already hard enough. And now you want to buy condo as a single? Isn't that like even harder? So I let you all guess how much salary you think you need first. And this is what I asked in my Telegram group. Most of them, in fact, around 50% of the people think that you need more than $10,000 per month to afford a two-bedder condo for a single. And if you want to participate in similar posts like this, join us at my Telegram group at HoneyMoneySG with over 9,000 members. So I know that this question is quite wide, right? Because what is the price of the condo is determined by a lot of factors. So I shall set some context to this question, starting with the location. So for private properties, right, usually we distinguish them by location and three main locations, the CCR, the RCR and the OCR. So CCR stands for Central Core Region and Central Core Region means like the central area of Singapore, like the Orchard area, the CBD area, all these are considered CCR, like it's very expensive one. And then the next one, we have RCR, which means the rest of the central region. These are more like the city fringe locations. We are talking about locations like Bunkeng, Kalang, Column V. And one good gauge you can use is the Circle Line MRT map, right? Because you see, this Circle Line MRT will kind of depict anything within the circle to be RCR because they are likely considered city fringe locations. But what about those locations outside of this Circle Line MRT? So those will be considered OCR, which is outside of the central region. Therefore, the location will determine the price factor of the property because the nearer you are to the central core region, the more prime the land is and therefore the more expensive per square feet is the condominium. So if you want a cheaper alternative, consider getting a condo that is near to the MRT but in the OCR region. And if your budget is really much lower, then maybe you can consider not right smack at the MRT. Just two to three bus stops away from the MRT, which is still considered quite convenient, right? Two to three bus stops, right, is less than five minutes. Ultimately, location plays a very big part if you're willing to sacrifice some convenience, like two to three bus stops and it's further away from the city, then you'll get a more bargain deal. The second thing that determines condo price is the size and the layout. And for size, I think most of you already know, nowadays the new launch condos, they are really small in size, right? Like between 600 square feet to 800 square feet for a two-bedder condo. And the market rate of condo is based on the price per square feet. So for example, a 800 square feet condo at $1,500 per square feet will get you $1.2 million market rate. But it also depends on the layout as well, right? Whether you are getting a studio or you want to get one bedroom plus one study. So the study is much smaller than a bedroom or you want to get a two bedder which means one master bedroom and one common bedroom not only in rooms or the number of toilets matter as well because for two bedrooms you may have two toilets or you can have one toilet but you will affect the real convenience of whether you want to rent it out to your tenant so number of bathrooms also matter whether it's one bathroom or two bathrooms i think the third thing to consider before buying a condo as a single is your purpose is it for your own state or is it for investment purpose because if you are using it for investment purpose, it means that you can buy this condo and rent it out and then you still stay at your parents' place until maybe you're 35. Because 35 is the age where you as a single, you can go and buy HDB flat. But in the meantime, if you want to earn some rental income as passive income and rent out your entire condo, then that's where you have to strategize whether this condo purchase is for you. So if you are intending to do it for own stay, where you stay in one bedroom, maybe you rent out the other bedroom, then you have to consider sacrificing your privacy because now you are living with a tenant and that means a tenant management. Now by buying a private condominium, it will also mean you are giving up on this HDB grants, especially the BTO grants for young couples, right? It can be a few tens of thousands of dollars. And by buying your first private property, it will also mean you must be quite high income as well. And if you exceed $7,000, you are not eligible to buy a BTO as a single anymore. You have to look at the resale market. So these are the strict HDB housing policies to keep the property market in check. And so far, these are all the theory and regulation concerns. Uh. I'll go through more about the numbers in detail after the word from the sponsor. You know, the national day may be over, but Weibo's offer is not over yet. In fact, they even upsized my referral offer that is exclusive to Honey Money SG followers only. Now, if you fund $10 or more, you stand to win 3 chances where you can win fractional shares from USD $3 to $100. And if you fund $300 Singapore dollars or more, you can win free fractional shares or trading vouchers worth from $10 US dollars to $500 for 5 chances. So in total, if you're super lucky, you can win $300 from the 3 chances and $2,500 from the 5 chances. To be super clear, there is no buy trades required, so you just need to deposit money, $300 to get a max optimization. So use my referral link down below or scan the QR code right here to get your Weibo account today.
The next point to consider whether you can afford to buy a condominium as a single is definitely your existing cash and CPF savings. Now, if we just take a look at one of the more average price of a two-bedroom condominium at 1.2, million Singapore dollars and you will have to pay a 25% down payment and that makes it $300,000 and out of this 25% down payment at least 5% must be in cash which also means you need to pay at least $60,000 in cash and $240,000 in CPF but most people wouldn't have $240,000 in their CPF right so it's probably more like $200,000 in cash and $100,000 in CPF don't forget every property have to pay buyer stamp duty so based on my $1.2 million example I plug it into property guru calculator the BSD is around $33,000 and let's say we are just going for a very lean renovation and maybe you buy some electrical appliance because you do know that condominiums comes with existing renovation so all these fees will add up to around $27,000 conservatively therefore if we just take a look at the initial outlay that will be $120 in cash for the 5% cash down payment $33,000 BSD and $27,000 lean renovation plus appliances and also $240,000 remaining in cash or CPF which gives a total of $360,000 do you have that amount of cash or CPF savings and that is just the initial part right I haven't talked about what is going to come because next coming up is your mortgage how much are you going to pay monthly? The good thing about private property is that the loan tenure can be 30 years. So if we stretch out the remaining payment of $900,000 into a 30-year tenor loan, and at the current home loan rate at 3.75% per annum, the monthly mortgage will be $4,168 per month. And let's say you only start paying for this mortgage payment by 2024, 1st January, which is when the CPF salary ceiling has been increased to 6.8K. So 23% multiplied by $6,800 is $1,564 coming into your ordinary account in CPF every month. So the remaining cash payment that you have to make is $4,168 minus $1,564 which gives you $2,604 that you have to pay in cash to finance the mortgage and let's say you are very lucky to rent out one bedroom at $1,600 per month so that will help you defray the cash needed right from $2,604 you take out $1,600 it means the net cash outlay is around $1,004 and maybe you add in one month of condo maintenance fees of $400 so your total cash outlay per month will be $1,004 plus $400 which comes up to around $1,400 monthly Therefore, if we look at the total monthly commitments, we are taking $1,568 from the CPF plus $1,404 for your cash outlay. It comes to a total of $2,968 and we can round that up to $3,000. And this is already assuming we are in a continual rental situation, which means your room is always rented out at at least $1,600. But as a good finance guideline, your monthly mortgage should not exceed 33% of your monthly gross salary. So that will also mean your commitment of $3,000 per month. And if you divide that by 33%, that will give you $9,000 gross salary to minimally afford a two-bedroom condominium. And this two-bedroom condominium is priced at $1.2 million and more likely in the OCR region, where it is not considered near to the central core region of Singapore based on August 2023 prices. And this 9,000 gross salary number is also excluding the fact that you can afford $360,000 of initial down payment plus any cash outlay for renovation and appliances. But the thing about private property is not always about cash flow. Right, sometimes you have to take a look at the potential capital gains because you are using leverage like a small amount of leverage initial capital to finance the potential capital gain that you may receive at the end of the three years where you are already eligible to sell your condo without any additional stamp duties but no all these calculations are just based on what I find on the internet and it may really differ from your personal situation but if you think that private property is not your game maybe you want to look at HDB how much salary can you afford for your first home in HDB, then I can refer you to this previous video right here.